Okay, Tektronix 549. I restored this oscilloscope in 2017, almost uh, three years ago. And last week I got back into it again to uncap it. When I say uncap, um, I basically did the opposite of recapping, where I have removed all the replacement electrolytics I've put in and uh, reformed the original capacitors. So it looks much cleaner inside from a capacitor perspective. So I thought I'll do a quick video of this scope, show you the storage function, and uh, we'll have some fun with it. So from a look perspective, overall it looks very similar to a standard uh, 500 series scope. From a front panel controls perspective, uh, this looks very similar to the other 500 series scopes. The only difference being uh, these set of controls which are mainly the storage controls. Let's look at the controls, um, starting with the basic CRT controls like intensity, focus, astig, and scale illumination. And uh, there is trace rotation as well, which is inside the astig knob. Vertical input is through the vertical plugin. Right now I have type CA dual trace plugin installed. Standard arrangement with uh, two time bases. The first one is time base A with the triggering controls for time base A and time base B, which is the delayed time base. So there is a delay multiplier knob and the triggering controls for uh, time base B. And of course the horizontal display selection switch to select between different time bases. Finally, the calibrator signal output, power switch, horizontal position. And we have a locate button here. This is the beam finder. Again, something which is not very common in the 500 series, but they have it built into this. Nothing specifically spectacular on the rear side. You have uh, the external cathode and uh, external grid selector switches, which basically lets you input an external signal for Z-axis modulation or intensity modulation. There's a connector for remote control, and the remote control socket looks like this. That's used for controlling the sweep and the erase function. So you can do a sweep reset and erase either the upper or lower half of the screen using this remote. Of course, this is not a wireless remote. This is a wired remote. Another look at the remote control. And uh, thanks to Kurt for uh, gifting this to me. Power input section. Of course, that's a power socket. Two fuses. So this unit is by default wired for uh, both uh, the 120 and the 110 region. So there's a switch inside the unit which selects what is the operating region or range. Because of that, there are two fuses. Generally, most manufacturers put one fuse holder and ask you to change the fuse according to the region you're operating in. But Tektronix decided to put two fuses, 6.25 amps one for the 110 operation and the 3.2 amp for the 230 volt operation. In addition to the main voltage selector, they have one more voltage selector here, which kind of selects the range. Say for example, for 110 or 120 volt region, you have three settings you can pick from 104, 105 or 127, which is called as low, medium or high. And the switch selects the exact voltage range you're operating this instrument in. Enough of theory, let's fire this guy up. Let me move the plug into single trace, input A only, time base A, let me put it to one millisecond per centimeter. Auto trigger positive slope for both the time bases and intensity counterclockwise and let's power it up. Let's turn on the screen illumination in intensity and that's our trace. Let's run through the basic functions of the scope, the non-storage functions. I've connected the calib signal output to the vertical plugin and right now it's sitting on time base A. I can switch to time base B and that's the time base B. And then I can switch to delay trigger, which is B intensified by A. And as I move the delay trigger control, I can navigate through the waveform and I can get into the delayed trigger where I get to see the zoomed in waveform. Now let's get into the storage functions. From a storage perspective, the screen is divided into two portions, the lower half and the upper half. This is the main storage control, which is divided into two sections. Now, this is where the storage is off. In case if you want to turn on storage for the upper half, you just press this button and the screen starts storing the waveform which is written into it. And in case if you want to erase it, you press the button. Once you're done with it, you turn off the storage. Pressing erase is 
a manual erase option. However, you can select an auto erase program wherein the screen can be erased either after the sweep or periodically. And you have this control segmented into either lower half, upper half, or for the whole screen. The viewing time control, which is over here, controls the time between auto erases, both in periodic auto erase as well as after sweep auto erase. The difference between both of them is uh, if you set this to auto erase after sweep, the screen will be wiped after one single sweep. Whereas if it's periodic, it's just gonna do it at a predetermined interval. Both cases, the time before each erase can be controlled by the viewing time control. Coming to the last part of the storage controls, uh, you have an option to put the scope into single sweep. You can reset the sweep using this button. However, it won't erase the waveform. So reset the sweep and erase the waveform you have a button here. Let's start with the very fundamental storage operation. If you look here, I have a signal which is coming into the scope at a very low frequency. So you can see it's moving up and down. And in case if I reduce my sweep rate to the lowest possible, I can actually see the spot moving, but I can't really take any measurements out of this uh, waveform. So if I enable the storage function, I could save this signal and then analyze it. All I have to do is to press the storage button in the scope and now I'm going to enable storage on the upper screen and it will start storing the waveform and this gives me an opportunity to analyze it. Now this is mostly useful when you use a spectrum analyzer plugin where you know you might probably set the resolution bandwidth to a pretty low value and it's going to be doing a long sweep taking a sweep long sweep time and then you can store the whole horizontal sweep out of the spectrum. That's one of the use cases for the storage function. Kind of once you're ready or done with the whole store or record function, you can switch off the trigger and then it'll stop tracing the signal after one complete sweep. And that's it. Now I have the stored waveform for uh, doing measurements. Once I'm done with the measurements, I can erase it. That's where I'm going to use the erase button. So all I have to do is press the erase button and it wipes away from. And once I'm ready to start measuring it again, I turn on the trigger. And there you go, it starts coming up again. Now that was a bit of a crude way to do it, but there is an option to enable this by default. You don't need to flip around the auto or the trigger function, rather you just enable the single sweep function here. So I'm going to enable the storage and you can see this light coming on and that's where it's going to start storing the waveform for just one sweep and once the sweep is done this indication is going to go off that's it and if i want to sweep it once again either i could reset the sweep with this button or i could reset and erase with this button as you can see it's again drawing the waveform Now I have a waveform which is stored in the CRT in the upper portion. So the lower portion is still in non-storage mode. So if I want, I could actually bring in the real-time waveform in the lower half and try to compare it with the stored waveform. So for that, all I have to do is move the vertical position down, move the scope to normal trigger. And now I can see the real-time waveform as well as the stored one on my CRT. Now let's try to capture faster waveform. So I have a square wave coming in from the calibrator into the scope and let's try to capture this. For that I'll enable of course single sweep and then I'll also enable auto erase after sweep. So now it's doing single sweep but the single sweep is being reset by the auto erase function. I'm still not storing the waveform. I'll enable the storage function on the lower half of the screen and now you can see it's actually storing the waveform on the lower side. I can adjust the time between each sweep by adjusting this control for viewing time. Now it's taking really long or I can reduce it. Now let me switch off the auto erase. Now I have a stored waveform. I can move the real time waveform to the upper portion of the screen and normal sweep. Now I have the real-time waveform 
as well as the stored waveform available for comparison. The bottom half is the stored waveform and the top half is real-time waveform. Now let's look at the fast writing controls. Uh, there are two of them, one called integrate traces and the other one is enhanced mode. Both of them are used for capturing high-speed waveforms. However, both works in a slightly different way. The enhanced mode works by um, changing the CRT operating levels. Basically, it induces a pulse into the storage uh, target to change the charging levels so that a lower beam current or a lower writing beam current can still produce a storage waveform. Whereas integrate traces works by cutting the flood gun intermittently. The difference between both of them is uh, integrate traces is used for uh, storing or capturing faster waveforms which repeat at a slower rate whereas enhanced mode is mostly used for waveforms which just happens once like a pulse which just comes in and you want to capture that so let's look at uh, those two operations now let's see what is enhanced storage okay i have applied the same signal but i'm going to use my whole screen for storage for this experiment let's start enabling the single sweep and then auto erase after the sweep so that it starts showing me the waveform and I'll enable storage on the whole screen. Now I'm going to increase my sweep rate. As you can see, as I go up, it's expanding the waveform further and further until a point it's slightly becoming invisible as you can see. So I'll go even further. Now I could increase the intensity a little bit to bring it back to life. And see it's slowly appearing again but as I move forward it's going to go off again this is where I can enable the enhanced mode so I'm going to switch the enhanced mode into full screen and reduce the intensity so that the screen doesn't get flooded time base at 0.5 microsecond per division with enhanced mode on and I can adjust the enhanced mode to make my waveform a little bit more sharper but you can see there will be a slight distortion which is which shows up this is normal this is expected in enhanced mode as you can see if I switch off the enhanced mode I can't see the waveform whereas if I bring back in it starts showing me the waveform the enhanced mode also can be turned on for the upper portion the full screen or just the lower screen and last let's look at integrate traces option now here we are trying to capture a fast waveform which is repeating at a slow rate. So I've injected a signal into the scope and it's sitting at uh, 50 microsecond per division horizontal time base. Let me turn on the magnifier, the horizontal magnifier. So now it is at 5x magnification. It's line triggered and in triggered sweep. Let me go ahead and increase the sweep and as you can see the waveform is almost disappearing from the screen. Now, if I need to capture this using integrate traces, I'll put this into single sweep, enable the storage, press and hold the integrate traces button, go to normal mode and come back. And that's my waveform. I can raise it, increase the sweep rate even further, hold on to the integrate traces button, go to normal sweep and then come back. Now we can see this is capturing it. Let's connect the remote. Sweep reset, upper and lower erase. Let's try this out. Okay, the scope is in uh, normal trigger. Let me move it to single sweep and see if the sweep reset is working. It is, which means I can enable the storage. Beautiful. And now I can erase it. Let's erase the upper and the lower. Let's have a quick look at the internals before we wrap up. That's a main power transformer, shunt resistors for the power supply pass tubes, rectifiers and current limiting resistors, delay pickoff and time base. That's main power supply tubes mostly. The rear side of the front panel. The top portion is mainly the main time base and the horizontal amplifier. That's a view with the time base door open, the main series pass tubes. 
you can see the main uh, timing capacitors the top portion is mostly the time base and the horizontal amplifier here is the top side um, the time base horizontal amplifier and then the high voltage section or the high voltage oscillator the storage this is the storage control switch coming to the right hand side of course the plug-in plug-in interface vertical amplifier and the vertical output tubes 8608s the CRT connection looking at the top side the high voltage oscillator tube the tubes on the uh, storage board and the main CRT so that wraps up the video um, thanks for watching and uh, take care huh. these things keep coming to me one after another it's a 585A now forget lifting it I can't even move it all by myself it's it's so heavy and um, the previous owner uh, did release the magic smoke from this so I'm not sure if I can restore it but I'll give it a try because this is a special one